Welcome back, everybody, live on Radio Row, home of Super Bowl 54 in beautiful Miami. We're on Miami Beach. Mike and Ryan taking you till 6 o'clock tonight, and the fun continues. We've been having a lot of fun down here, and this is going to be fun. We've got uh, a couple of guests with us right now, one uh, that you're probably familiar with in our listening audience, and uh, we'll get to him in just a second, but also uh, D- Daniel Fondora from the uh, Special Olympics is with Mac Holland's former Eagle and current uh, Miami Dolphin wide receiver, but uh, this is a real treat to meet you, Daniel. Uh, tell us a little bit about you know what's the ball going on here. What what, uh, what brings you uh, down to Miami? I just want to say I'm born raised in Miami, and I've been in ball special Olympics for for almost 20 years, and I do participate in flag football, basketball, um, was a stand up paddle, golf, softball, and this sport. The sport right here is soccer. Yeah, and nice. you were named the uh, Athlete of the Year, right? 2019. 2019 Ooh. Athlete of the Year. What a special honor. Now, which of the sports that you listed, flag football, basketball, soccer, is your favorite? Um, if I had to choose one of these sports, I participate based on the fun experience and the fun level. And the sport, I will definitely continue training in the long term. Well, be hot, kind of close with basketball, but this sport, flag football, would be the sport that I would like to continue growing with. Yeah, so uh, flag football is what kind of. Now, you have a Saints hat on, I see. Is yes. the Saints your team? Why Saints? Because it's my family's team. Yeah. For my mom's side. So uh-huh. I decided to dedicate with the my favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. And of course, born and raised Miami. Of course, look like the Dolphins do have on my wristband, but I would have to say this, is New Orleans Saints is becoming my, my, my favorite part of the fan. Very there cool, Daniel. Uh, and Mac, now, how did you uh, get tied in with Daniel and the Special Olympics people? It's a pretty cool, uh, you know, feeling you know, it, to see you know, the other day, seeing everybody around <laughs> and seeing all the different uh, athletes is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, so when I was in Philly, I did a lot of community stuff uh, in different different areas of, of work. But then when I came down here, I actually had some teammates of mine that were involved in Special Olympics and were like, hey, Mac, you should you should check it out. You should yeah. reach out to them and see how it goes. And as I've been with Daniel and yesterday I was with Taja and a few other you know people from Special Olympics, I've kind of fallen in love with it. And just you realize how capable somebody with a learning disability is just like somebody with that one. Right. And you know, you give them the opportunity to be together and play sports together, and they can do just the same things. Yeah, the next Special Olympics USA Games are in Orlando, yep. not too far from here. 2022, over 4,000 athletes, 10,000 volunteers, 1,500 coaches, and uh, about 150,000 fans will be there uh, for information at Special Olympics on Twitter. Uh, and Matt Collins, now, of course, our audience – Knows you pretty well. Oh, yeah. You uh, won a Super Bowl yep. with the Philadelphia Eagles, oh, yeah. and uh, now you're down here in Miami. So first off, you're in Miami. Obviously, they're kind of in a rebuilding mode. How was the you know what the transition from Philly to Miami, where you have a team that was Super Bowl yep. trying to win the Super Bowl, and then you come here and it's obviously a rebuilding situation. Right. I mean, there's a you got your obvious like your weather's way different, <laughs> and then Philly's I think was the second oldest, and I, Miami's the youngest team in the NFL. So age wise, you go into a locker room with a lot of guys my age, 24, 25, 26. Yeah, um, which for me helped because you can build relationships with those guys easier. Because you know when you got an older team, like guys have to go home, they have kids, they have families, they can't sit in in the locker room all day and, yeah. and just hang out like yeah. the younger guys can. Um, so that helped. But then, you know, like you said, it's a whole different dynamic. You know. Week nine or ten, the Dolphins knew they're not going to the playoffs, but they play hard. Practice hard. You kind of could see it in the back end of the season when you know we end up winning, beating the Eagles, yeah, you know, yeah. beating the Eagles, beating the Patriots, you know, w- winning these big games, and that's just a-, a compliment to Coach Flores and everything he does. Now, obviously, you win the Super Bowl, and then the next two years. Did you sense that things were different from that Super Bowl team? There was a lot of talk about, like, if you weren't on that Super Bowl team, it was hard to kind of connect with the guys who won the Super Bowl. I mean, was it a different feel in there? Um, I think I think what I've realized about the NFL is that, you know, my rookie year I win the Super Bowl. I'm like, this is how it's supposed to do. You're just supposed to win the Super Bowl every year. This is easy. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't know what all the hype's about. Like, I'm about <laughs> to, be, I'm about to be, have seven rings in no time, and Tom right. Brady's going to be in the dust. Uh, and then you realize it's it's not that easy. It's even harder to repeat because once you get that that uh, that taste of victory, it's like, ah, 
I, do I have to do as much work as I did before? Right. It's harder to, you know, put that same amount of work in because you already have what you have. So, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely tougher. I, I mean, I, I'd say the connection between the guys was still the same. But it's like any football team, if you're not winning, like a, it's it, trouble. It, yeah, it's trouble. There's, there's problems. It's trouble. You and can do the exact same things. Because I think in 2017 we had a lot of, you know, problems. Not, we, we were a perfect team. But sure. at the end of the day we were winning games, and that, a lot of that stuff can get brushed under the rug. Exactly. So this year – uh, and, and you were a part of it firsthand for a little bit. A lot of those problems under the rug came out. Yeah. Right? So you were in the wide receiver room. Yep. You were on the offensive side of the ball. What can you share with us that you saw that was maybe the reason behind what was going wrong, whether it was locker room, whether it was chemistry issues? Like, what was happening behind, behind closed doors? I, th I mean, I think for, for us, the chemistry was good. Like, when you see us out there, like, we're together, we're having fun. Right. But what ends up happening is we had a lot of injuries, and that's and that's tough on any over team. the years. Too. Yeah, over the years, every I mean, year. Even in, yeah, even the Super Bowl year, 2017, we had a bunch, and I think we even had more injuries in 2017 of like big time players, with JP, Chris Maragos, Hicks, Carson, obviously, all those guys go down, um, and I think that just plays a role in like over time, because then other guys have to take, fill the role, and they're more susceptible to injury, and that's just tough for really any team. You know, in college, it's easy just throw somebody else in there. Yeah. He'll just fill the role for a little bit, plug yeah. and play. But in the NFL, there's, you know, the I other side like gets paid for too. For whatever reason, it feels like in college, doesn't have the week to week major injuries yeah. like the, the like the, no, it's the, ridiculous. the best players are hurt all the time in college. It feels like the best players are never yeah. are always available. Yeah. For whatever yeah. reason, I mean, that's just the size of the team. You look at a college side there's a hundred guys. That's yeah. true. And those hundred guys are also practicing. So those star players aren't doing a whole bunch of work like they are. In, in, like, everybody has to practice in that. Now, so, one yeah. thing that I think is interesting, because obviously, you know, people were very critical. Max got no catches. What's going on? Yeah. The receiver coach changed every year you were there, right? Yep. Do you think that that was, number one, warranted, and number two, an effect on maybe your progression as a player, that you're constantly getting something different? Like, that's a position that seemed like was getting very highlighted this year of what's going on with that position. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's easy to say the receivers aren't aren't getting any catches, but I mean, if you look at our how our offense is built, like you, Zach and Dallas are both really receivers in our in, in a lot of packages. Yeah. So if you count like their catches, it doesn't look like the receivers aren't getting any catches. And I know they had that stat like Carson's the first to go for four thousand yards with no passes to the receivers or something like that. Or <laughs> no five hundred. No yards, receiver no had more than five hundred. Yeah. 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 But like Dallas is a receiver, Zach is a receiver. Like in our offense, that's just the way it's built. Like obviously they're tight ends. Technically, and they yeah. block and do all that. Because the and, and the coaches, they, they they every week they would say, you know, Max is a big part of the offense. Yeah. And then, of course, the media saying, well, he's got no targets right. and no throws. Was that frustrating, or was that your role? Um, no, I mean, I th it's definitely frustrating as a receiver, to, you know, to not get get catches. But you know, if I'm not getting targets, I, I can't like magically catch the ball. <laughs> so for me, it, what's more frustrating is that we're Wait, losing. Wait, you can't? Games. <laughs> yeah, it's like so. You know, I think it got spun like Mac has no catches, but like sure. Mac has. No, it's not like I was dropping the ball. Um, right, but. We were losing. That's what like really bothers me, uh, because I, I could care less about catches. If you win, everybody's happy, and like the building's happy. There's not a whole bunch of turnover in the locker room, um, so that's what really bothered me. How about Carson Wentz as a leader? Because that's been something that has come up a lot. Yeah. Fair or foul? Just like everything in the media, right. a lot of it's foul. But that's what you we get talk to play about. For Fitzpatrick now, which is very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting um, because he is kind of like the epitome of like, yeah. I'm the man. I and think, they're two different personalities oh, yes, for sure. Definitely completely different. I think all the stuff about Carson is garbage. Yeah. Like, people are so quick to forget that we were like 12 and one before he got hurt in 2017. Like he was a good leader then, and then he just disappeared. And not a good leader. <laughs> like they're just basing off of his his win record. But he's a great leader. He's always been a great leader. Yeah. But it's the NFL. What have you done for me lately kind of thing. I, I get it. Now, how much, you know, because they had Alshon, Deshaun Jackson, and Nelson were supposed to be the three. And everybody yeah. said, man, there was reports that there were, or rankings that had the Eagles receiving core as the best in the league yeah. in the preseason. We saw it in week one. How do you think the season would have been different had those guys not suffered the injuries um, I for think that team? Obviously, you're not on that yeah, right. team. But for, for the Eagles. I think it would have been a, a big difference. I think it would have been more like 27. Would they be here today? B very, very likely. <laughs> very likely. I mean, if you look at 2017 with Torrey and Alshon and Nelson, and then I was able to kind of fill in when they needed it, that, that worked really well. And, you know, guys were built for the, the position they played. Just like 2019, Alshon's built to play the X, the big receiver. D-Jack's built to play the speed guy. Nelly's built to play the slot. And when guys go down, now you kind of fill in spots that, 
you know, maybe not, not your best at that spot. Here's a question that a lot of Eagles fans like to know. Mike Groh was, yep. he was the receiver coach. Yep. He then got promoted to offensive coordinator. Yep. Frank was the coordinator. Yep. When he left, people said, man, the Eagles are struggling because Frank's gone. Yep. And now Mike's there. Yep. What does the coordinator do when Doug calls the plays? What's that guy's role in Philly? Um, so, you know, he designs a lot of the plays, yeah. puts, puts kind of a, a call sheet together. But at the end of the day, even when Frank was there, it's like it's a group thing. It's not like it's just the OC does his thing and then and then he calls the plays. It's a, it's a group thing. So it's it's obviously easy to blame blame stuff on. Oh, everyone. There, anytime something goes wrong, Mac, you know this, there has to be blame yeah, somewhere. Has to Who go. deserves right. the blame? And right. it, especially in Philly, it's like with Doug calling the plays, that's the question right now. Yeah. Like, what's the OC do? Right. And like you said, it's, it's like a it's group a group effort. Thing. They're yeah. upstairs doing everything together. It's not like, guys, I'm going to make these plays, and then on game day, just <laughs> encourage the guys to do them. Well, it seems that uh, down here, things are on the up. Yeah. It seems yeah. that everything seems to be positive. The coach yeah. here, I love watching that guy he's coach. Awesome. Forget, awesome. it. Forget watching you guys play. Watching that guy yeah. coach is awesome. He's, he's in it. He's, he's into in, it, man. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the real deal, Flores. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He definitely is. He's, re he's, a, he's a great coach. and. He gets just as excited and frustrated as we do if, if things aren't going the way they need to be. All right, Daniel, uh, yes. who's your pick for this game? Da uh, Kansas, Dallas, no doubt. Definitely not <laughs> no, Dallas. Kansas City not. <laughs> or San Francisco, who do you like? I'm going to say it's, it's a short answer. It's going to be Chiefs. Chiefs? Chiefs. Mahomes, because of Mahomes were over Garoppolo, is that as I'm going to tell that? you this. The main fact is everybody thinks that the 49ers is going to win because they have a strong defense and a strong work ethic. But to be honest, man, it doesn't really matter how strong they are. In the end, I think Kansas City is going to find a way to close the game and overcome the defense adversary. It's going to be a close game. Yeah. For, well, for you know Sunday. what? It's going to be a fun game either way, oh, right? Yeah. These yeah, are yeah, two. These are, this, this game is going to be so much right. fun. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, congratulations, man. We wish you luck with uh, the future. And uh, Daniel Fundora, who joined the Special Olympics 18 years ago, and he's participated in basketball, soccer, flag football, karate, soccer, uh, you name it. This guy was the 2019 Athlete of the Year. So congratulations on that honor. And uh, Matt Collins, yeah. uh, we appreciate you stopping Thank by. You. And your uh, role with the Special Olympics is awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, you, we'll be sir. back with more Sports Bash live here on Radio Row in Miami on 97.3 ESPN.